Uh, there's more than some poison oak on this trail. Right here is where 3,700 feet of descending awesomeness starts. Holy crap. I got poison oak on this trail, but it was totally worth it. Don't, don't hang out in the underbrush on this trail. Young's Rock, also sometimes referred to as Moon Point, is one of the canonical Oak, Oak Ridge rides. Aside from ATCA, this is what you think of when you think of Oak Ridge. This is what you're talking about when you say you want to ride Oak Ridge. You'll, you will hire a shuttle company to take you to the top of this trail. Alternatively, you can camp out at Camper's Flat, which is right at the bottom of the trail, and then ride your bike up Forest Service Road 439 all the way to the top. But seriously, don't drive all the way down to Oak Ridge just to do a self-shuttle. That's stupid. Hire a shuttle company. The trail runs relatively flat for the first mile with a little bit of climbing, but mostly trending down the hill. One of the most remarkable features of this ride is the sheer variation in climate zones and types of forest it travels through. Up here at the top, everything is still relatively moist and downright verdant. That, that will change later in the ride. When you get to this intersection with the actual Moon Point Trail, turn left, unless you really want to go see Moon Point for some reason. I mean, it's, it's not really that far off the main trail. I'm sure it's totally cool to go check it out out, but our, our guides didn't have time for that, that, that this day. After the intersection, there will be a bit of climbing through this gorgeous subalpine meadow and next to these rather, rather large hemlocks until the trail turns onto this narrow bench with tight switchbacks. The tread is more loamy than duffy in this section and has managed to hold up quite well to usage. This section is a screaming fun good time that'll keep you on your toes. The descent is technical and still a little bit raw, with the bench eroding away in some places where you'll have to really pay attention. That's what makes this trail so much fun. It takes five minutes to do a lot of descending down this certain aspect here, through copious amounts of impressive woods over about a mile, where you'll drop around 700 feet in elevation as you start to see just the slightest hints of a change in climate zone. The understory starts to open up as the trail descends yet again. The aspect of the slope you're descending starts to flatten out while the trail grade gradually um, kind of steepens in places. There's more undulation and therefore less brake burning and more bike handling as the trail descends. There is this one fairly difficult loose scree field to be aware of as well. Um, it's not really a rock garden. It's just a loose pile of rocks. You can't ride it anyway. There are yet more switchbacks as the trail descends even more. At around two and a half miles of descending, the forest starts to open up a bit more and you'll start smelling the butterscotch aroma of ponderosa pine and the sweet sweet scent of tarweed there are some pretty fun knife edges in some of these openings as the trail traverses the top of the ridge with some pedally sections interspersed throughout here the trail continues to get drier and rockier the more you descend, popping in and out of the forest canopy. Then you really start to encounter some open meadows. After this meadow here, the trail is really going to start to open up into some serious fun. The grade steepens, the sight lines open, and the surface starts to get interesting. The only thing that gets in the way of really shredding this section are the additional switchbacks, which are kind of tight, but that's okay because the surface on this extended bench cut slash ridgeline awesomeness is just varied enough to keep it awesome. And the nine minutes you'll spend descending this one section will have made the entire endeavor worthwhile. By and by, the forest will open way up as you encounter this beautifully executed thinning project in the middle of what looks like either an old wildfire or a prescribed burn. It's kind of hard to say which. Hang out at this road crossing for a minute. In four and a half minutes, you'll be back at the shuttle van you hired. This last section is where you'll want to pull up your socks and then throw them in someone else's garbage can when you're done, because this is definitely where I got poison oak. There are ponderosa pines, tarweed, madrone trees, and poison oak. Lots of poison freaking oak. This section of trail is also rowdy, fast, loose, and steep. This is where it becomes more like the steep, challenging, loamy, and rocky trails of the Cascades I've come to know and love. It also gets a little bit greener toward the bottom, descending through some thicker stands of trees again as it nears the moisture contained at the bottom of the canyon. Finally, the scent of tarweed becomes overpowering as you crash into this one last rocky outcrop, and you'll find yourself back at the road with a big, huge grin on your stupid face. If you were camped out at Camper's Flat, you'd be at your tent now. Wouldn't that be awesome? I bet you could work out an arrangement with a shuttle company. Now, get out there and go ride Stoke Ridge.